All right, class, let's dive into the world of asset-backed securities, ABS. Imagine you're a lender with a bunch of loans on your books, maybe car loans, mortgages, or credit card receivables. Now, what if I told you there was a way to bundle those loans, sell them off to investors, and get money up front? That's exactly what asset-backed securities, or ABS, allow lenders to do. Through a process called securitization, cash-generating assets like loans are pooled together and sold as securities to investors. This setup not only benefits the lender, but also offers investors a new way to earn returns. So let's break down how securitization works, the various types of ABS, and why it's such a big deal in the financial markets. Securitization starts by grouping a pool of assets. Think about those car loans, mortgages, or other receivables, and transferring them from the original lender to a special purpose entity, SPE. The SPE takes ownership of these assets and issues securities backed by them. This way, the cash flows from the original borrowers are redirected to investors who hold the ABS. Here's the beauty of it. Securitization transfers the risk associated with these loans away from the lender, giving investors direct exposure to the cash flow from the loan pool. Imagine a bank with car loans transferring them to an SPE. The SPE then sells securities to investors who receive the loan payments directly. The SPE has taken on the loans and now the bank has freed up cash and reduced its risk. To make this more concrete, let's look at an example involving Brightwheel Automotive BRWA. BRWA sells cars and offers customers car loans which means it's tied up in a lot of receivables waiting to be repaid over the years. But rather than wait, BRWA wants to turn these loans into cash more quickly. So BRWA decides to create an SPE called Car Loan Trust CLT. First, BRWA sells 1 billion euros in car loans to CLT, transferring ownership of these loans and clearing them from its balance sheet. Next, CLT issues asset-backed securities, or ABS, to investors who are now entitled to the cash flow generated by the car loans. BRWA's customers continue making their monthly payments on those car loans, but now these payments go to CLT, which then distributes the cash to the ABS investors. Through this setup, BRWA has transformed its receivables into immediate cash, while ABS investors enjoy a steady income stream from those car loans. The Benefits of Securitization The benefits of securitization reach well beyond BRWA. For issuers like banks and lenders, securitization brings several financial advantages. By transferring loans to an SPE, banks can turn what were once illiquid assets into cash. Instead of having these loans sit on their balance sheet, banks now have cash, which enables them to make even more loans, increasing their lending capacity. But it doesn't stop there. Securitization also boosts profitability. Banks earn not only from originating loans, but also from selling them to the SPE collecting fees in the process. And by passing on the loan risk to investors, banks manage their balance sheets more effectively, keeping risk lower than if they held all loans in-house. For investors, securitization brings its own unique set of perks. One of the most attractive aspects is customization. ABS are structured with different risk return profiles, so investors can choose securities that align with their goals, whether they prefer safer investments or are willing to take on more risk for higher potential returns. Also, ABS make it possible for investors to diversify their portfolios without diving into direct loan management. For instance, pension funds often invest in ABS to match their long-term liabilities with the stable income streams these securities provide. 
Securitization offers accessibility to private debt markets, making it possible for investors to diversify and earn bond-like returns without the need to handle loan servicing or credit checks themselves. But the benefits of securitization extend beyond individual lenders and investors, positively impacting the broader economy and financial markets. Securitization makes it possible to trade loans as securities, which adds liquidity to financial markets. Imagine how a traditional loan would typically stay on a bank's books, tying up cash for years. Through securitization, these loans become tradable, leading to greater efficiency and price discovery in the markets. Another advantage is risk distribution. Securitization spreads risk across a diverse pool of investors, reducing the concentration of risk for individual institutions. By converting loans into tradable securities, securitization opens up alternative funding sources, lowers overall funding costs, and gives companies a stronger credit profile by removing loans from their balance sheets. All these factors combined lead to a more robust, diversified and efficient financial system. Types of securitized products. Now that we understand the basic process and benefits, let's explore the types of securitized products out there. The simplest form is covered bonds. These bonds are common in Europe, where banks keep a separate pool of loans like mortgages as collateral. If the bank defaults, investors get paid from this collateral pool, which is segregated from the bank's other assets. However, since the assets stay on the bank's balance sheet, covered bonds don't represent a full securitization. This setup is a bit safer for investors since the assets are still tied to the bank, but it's not as flexible for the bank as a true off-balance sheet ABS. Next, we have pass-through securities, which are the classic example of securitization. In pass-through structures, the assets are completely removed from the lender's balance sheet and are instead owned by an independent legal entity. This entity issues securities backed by the asset pool, and investors receive principal and interest payments directly passed through from the pool. Pass-through structures often include structural enhancements to stabilize payment patterns, reducing the impact of defaults or prepayments on cash flows. These enhancements allow the cash flows to be redirected across various tranches, with senior tranches receiving payments first, followed by mezzanine and equity tranches in order. This arrangement enables investors to choose their exposure based on their risk tolerance. Moving into a more specific type of pass-through security, we have mortgage-backed securities, MBS, which are backed by a pool of mortgages. Mortgage-backed securities come in several varieties, each with its own unique features. We have residential MBS, RMBS, which are backed by home mortgages, and commercial MBS, also known as CMBS, which are backed by loans on commercial properties. Another type is the collateralized mortgage obligation, CMO, where the cash flows from the mortgage pool are divided into tranches with different maturities and payment structures. Beyond MBS, there are also collateralized debt obligations, CDO, collateralized loan obligations, CLO, and collateralized bond obligations, CBO, each backed by different kinds of debt assets from corporate loans to bonds. These structures give investors options to invest in a variety of asset types, depending on their preferences for risk, return, and cash flow timing. Let's illustrate this with a quick example. Suppose an SPE issues three tranches in an ABS deal. The senior tranche, valued at $70 million, has the highest credit rating and offers the lowest yield. Next, the mezzanine tranche, 
worth $20 million carries a medium yield with moderate risk. Finally, the equity tranche valued at $10 million has the highest yield and highest risk because it absorbs any potential losses first. Cash flows are distributed in that order. Senior tranche first, mezzanine next, and equity last, giving each tranche a different level of protection and risk exposure. In the case of any losses, the equity tranche takes the hit, protecting the senior tranches. This layered structure is what allows ABS to cater to a broad range of investor preferences from conservative to aggressive. Despite all these benefits, securitization does come with some risks. First, there's credit risk tied to the underlying assets. If borrowers in the loan pool default, the cash flow to ABS investors is reduced, impacting returns. Another risk is related to cash flow timing. Payments can fluctuate due to early loan payoffs or borrower defaults, making cash flows irregular. One critical lesson from the 2007 to 2009 financial crisis is that securitizing risky assets like subprime mortgages without proper oversight can destabilize the entire financial system. So while securitization is a powerful financial tool, it must be managed responsibly to avoid triggering broader economic issues. Central to the securitization process is the Special Purpose Entity, SPE. The SPE is designed to protect both the original lender and the investors. As a legally distinct entity, the SPE keeps the assets separate from the lender's balance sheet. This separation means that if the original lender faces bankruptcy, the assets held by the SPE, and thus the ABS issued, remain unaffected. This setup reduces credit risk for the lender and often boosts the credit rating of the ABS. Since the SPE is legally isolated from the lender's bankruptcy, investors can be confident that their claims on the underlying assets will stay intact. Returning to our example, by transferring its loans to CLT, Bright Wheel Automotive safeguards these assets from any potential financial trouble it might face. ABS investors in this case are protected because their investment is tied to CLT's assets, not to Bright Wheel's balance sheet. This structure, often called bankruptcy remoteness, is essential for reassuring ABS investors that their returns are safe even if the originator encounters financial difficulties. A typical securitization deal involves several key players who each play a specific role in making the transaction work. The seller or originator is the one who owns and sells the assets to the SPE. In our example, that would be BRWA, which sells the car loans to CLT, the loan buyer, or SPE, like CLT, purchases these assets and issues ABS to investors. The loan servicer, usually the original lender, continues to manage the underlying loans, collecting payments from borrowers and passing them on to the SPE. So in this process, the seller or originator, think of BRWA, owns and sells assets like car loans to the SPE, such as CLT. Then the SPE, acting as the loan buyer, takes over these assets and issues ABS to investors. Simple, right? There are also additional parties involved, including underwriters who help sell the ABS to investors and rating agencies, which assess the credit risk of the ABS to give investors a sense of the security's reliability. The trustee is an independent financial institution that holds the assets, ensuring that payments are distributed to ABS investors according to the structure outlined in legal documents. These documents include the purchase agreement, 
which guarantees the quality of the assets, and the prospectus, which details the payment structure, risks, and any credit enhancements provided for the ABS. To introduce the role of the Special Purpose Entity, SPE, in securitization, Think of the SPE as a safety net designed to protect both the lender and investors involved in the transaction. When assets like loans are transferred to an SPE, they become separate from the lender's financial situation, providing a layer of security for investors. This legal separation means that even if the lender faces financial trouble or bankruptcy, the assets held by the SPE remain secure and continue generating cash flows for investors. The special purpose entity is crucial in a securitization deal, acting as a buffer that protects both the originator, the seller of the assets, and the investors. As a legally distinct entity, the SPE isolates the assets from the originator's financial issues. If the originator were to go bankrupt, the assets held by the SPE, and therefore the ABS backed by them, remain unaffected, a concept known as bankruptcy remoteness. By transferring assets to the SPE, the originator not only reduces its own credit risk, but also often improves the credit rating of the ABS, as investors now rely solely on the SPE's asset pool. This setup is reinforced by the idea of a true sale in many jurisdictions, where ownership is fully transferred to the SPE, protecting investors' claims even in the event of a default. However, securitization laws differ across countries, and risks like fraudulent transfer claims can arise, so it's essential for investors to be aware of the specific legal environment surrounding ABS. To wrap up, securitization is a game changer in finance. It allows lenders to transform loans into cash and gives investors access to a diverse array of cash flow generating assets. Whether we're talking about basic covered bonds or complex CDOs, ABS provide a range of investment options that cater to different risk profiles. But as the 2007 to 2009 crisis taught us, securitization requires responsible management. Proper legal structuring, careful asset selection, and transparency are all crucial to making securitization a safe and effective tool for modern finance. As you study securitization, keep these examples in mind. They'll help you connect theory with real-world application and understand how ABS play a critical role in today's financial markets. Good luck, and let's keep building that knowledge.